Expand God's kingdom. So who is in your sphere of influence? God wants us to spread our influence for the growth of his kingdom. Expanding the kingdom is what we should be focused on when spreading our influence. It should be for the glory of God, rather than for the glory of the man or even for ourselves. When we expand our influence, we always want to be careful to give God praise, honor, and glory. And in doing so, we want to bring others into the ministry and the kingdom of God and His righteousness. But don't just be seeking the kingdom because you want something in the return. Seek it because you want to get the message of the gospel out. The good news is for those who are not saved that they can be saved through Jesus and that they don't have to suffer eternal punishment in hell. If Jesus said that he can cast out devils and that the kingdom of God is here now that means we can cast out devils too, we can be Christ-like. That's what it means to be a Christian, it means to imitate Christ. Imitating God, being like him, living like him, acting like him, speaking like him. And that's how our sphere of influence should be, like-minded in Christ. That's how a body should be, unified in Christ's vision. The kingdom of God is here with us, and we want to expand it to all the world. And Jesus said, Go to everyone in the world and preach the message of the kingdom to all who would listen and baptize them who accept it. So don't be afraid. Let his influence work through you to become a light in the world. When we are expanding the kingdom, where do we begin? Well, we start with repentance and repenting from our sins. When we do this, we are given a clean slate in our lives. We want to be holy because he is holy. In the scriptures, Jesus talks about the small mustard seed and how it grew into the mighty mustard tree where all the birds would come to roost in. All the people from all over the world would finally come and roost in the kingdom of God, and that's how it is right now by growing and constantly expanding for everyone to come in and rest in his peace. We want to continue to grow and expand the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When we are expanding the kingdom with our influence, I'm bringing in people, you're bringing in people, and when we come together we are a body as one united in Christ, a church that cannot be stopped and that has an unshakable foundation in God's word. If you apply just basic principles of what God says in his word, you can move mountains. Apply what Jesus said, our love for him is showcased to everyone when we do what he said. So be kingdom-minded and focus on expanding the realm of God's world into the world of those who are lost. Because once they get a taste of how good God is and that he is willing and just to forgive them of all of their sins, then that's one more into the kingdom. Go and gather as many as you can. He says, That's what expanding your influence is. You're gathering as many people as you can into the kingdom. Why are you standing here? God says, why are you doing nothing? Because, Lord, I have no purpose in life. I don't know what to do. I am just here living. I'm just here alive. Praise God, I know you are coming back, but I'm just going to stand here. He says, no, I'm going to hire you. Go and gather. Many are called to be laborers in the kingdom. Many are called to do such mighty works by God. Many can do all the things that God has promised in his word. Many can do so much, but they don't even begin to take a step forward in it. They stand idle and do nothing. Many will complain, I don't have a purpose, I don't know what to do. God gave the simple command in his word. He said, go to all nations, preach the gospel, gather the people. Have love and hunger for the people's salvation around you. It's something God wants all of us to have. Whoever you influence uses it for their salvation. You may say, I don't have any influence on anyone I know. You don't know that. Everyone around you in some fashion is someone you influence whether they like you or not. You don't know how many lives you have touched, and you may never know until you get to heaven. But know this, it's a lot more than you realize. God knows what all you have done. Don't stand idle in these last days. Don't bury what talents you have in the ground. Use them for the glory of God. People recognize gifts you may have, and when you use those gifts and honor God with them, they will take notice of who he is and how he has blessed you in your life. You can do many things to help the kingdom of God, even funding someone's ministry. 
It's something that you took part in by helping another soul to hear the gospel. Now if you can't give money to help in ministry, that's fine. Find another way to help spread the gospel. Do with what you have, in the end, we keep nothing when we leave the earth. So in all manner of things, or talents, we may have to use them for the kingdom. Whatever I have, I want to make sure that it goes to God's glory and is used for expanding his kingdom to someone who needs the message of eternal life through Jesus. I may not know whose lives I may have touched. I may never know here on earth, but only in heaven, I will know who was saved because I spoke up. But think about all the years I didn't speak up. It's sad to think about all the years that we were idle. We didn't do anything for God's kingdom. It's sad, but we now have a lot of work ahead of us to do. We can't look back now, but only forward in the work. We are in the eleventh hour and time is growing short. So don't be afraid of your calling. Don't be afraid and say, I don't have any influence. You have more than you realize. It may seem to you insignificant in what you do, but whatever it is that you do, my friends, will go a long way in expanding the kingdom. With what little you have, don't despise it. You may think that it's so small that it will not amount to anything. But a small seed can grow into a mighty tree, and the tree's branches will become a home for those living in the kingdom.